All right, so uh, first I want to talk in this video a little bit about where I'm at right now, the end of October. Painting season is now over, temperatures in the 50s. Uh, I think the next two weeks are either going to be raining or high chance of rain, so really high humidity. So yeah, painting is, is pretty much done. Last year, when I got to this stage, my goal was to get the body glued together and painted white with a stretch goal of getting R2 on his feet. Now, I didn't realize how much work was involved. So, I just managed to get the body all glued together and painted one of the last days of temperatures in the 60s last year. And I put the last coat on so heavy I got runs and drips. And I also had a gap between a couple of the pieces of the body and I was so just burnt out from all the work I had done last year and time spent and then the final result was not even making my primary goal of getting the body painted although I did get it painted I was not happy with it and knew that I was gonna have to at least sand off the drips and so I just put the project aside for like seven months <laughs> till this year when it was weather started to turn and I started to get back into it so we're a little bit different this year. So this year's goal was getting him on his feet with a stretch goal of getting everything I could that's easier to get done before putting, putting him on his feet, but still not directly related to putting him on his feet. And I got most of that stretch goal done. He's obviously not on his feet, but that was the goal for this year. And he's going to be on his feet this year. He is. Um, hopefully there won't be any major issues once he's on his feet and the, you know, the weight is all resting on the parts that haven't had all that um, weight on and um, hopefully no more cracks open up in the body or anything and it'll be okay. But right now I'm, I'm in a lot better mental state than I was last year. So what I'll talk about um, in this video, I'm just going to kind of go off the cuff here. Part of the stretch goal um, were these pieces here. Now, I did get the top ring, the top ring bolted to the frame. Um, I don't have a bolt through this back. There's a spot for a bolt and nuts in the back, so I'll probably put one there, but that's not a big deal. The main deal was I already had the four threaded rods through the body, but I had to cut the four threaded rods that go through the shoulder modules, and then they go through the top two rings of the body, because the body is three rings. So four rings, or four threaded rods, here's one go all the way through the body, through all three rings, through the top ring, and get bolted together to add strength to the frame. Because you can see there's not much of a frame here. It's just, it's the skins, it's some thicker parts that uh, help you bolt things on and reinforce things, but it's, there's not a lot of frame there, so that's why it was designed with metal threaded rods going through holding everything together as well as being everything being glued. So that I had cut the threaded rods last year to size but this year um, apart from reprinting my shoulder pieces because I wasn't happy with the ones I had I had just recently last week cut the four threaded rods two that go through each of the shoulder modules the corners there and then go through two rings of the body and are bolted on the bottom that hold that sh help hold that shoulder model um, module in place along with two bolts down there that hold it. So I got that done um, and then stretch goal was this and this utility arm. This large data port and this utility arm here need this top ring to be off or at least lifted up fairly high to be able to put them in. 
Um, if you can see here, this top ring goes on top of this large data port piece. And there's a bolt hole there, which, haha, <laughs> now that I'm thinking of it, oh yes, I did glue in the captured nuts. This lower piece of the large data port has a square nut in it. And then a threaded, or a, yeah, a bolt goes through here and into the data port piece. And I'm kind of, if I'm hemming and hawing about that, it's because I honestly forgot all about that. And I believe that's where that goes. I may have made a mistake and the bolt might go in before this top ring goes on, but I don't think so. I think the bolt goes through there and into the captive nut on the data port. But yes, something I forgot there. So, as I was saying, trying to say, it's kind of a stretch goal because you can put the top ring on without this in place. But if you do, you're going to have to take the top ring off at some point to put it on. So that's kind of was kind of a stretch goal. It's not necessary, but it's better to do. So the same thing with the bottom. So this is two pieces, and they're sandwiched and they're bolted. And then the large, the upper utility arm here has a pin that goes through underneath the large data port through a bearing that's inside the utility arm and another bearing at the bottom of the utility arm and then a little bit into the body here that holds the utility arm in place. So to get that pin in, the data port has to come out and the data port has to come out top ring has to come off or like I said maybe you could undo half of the bolts and lift it up enough to get it in and out. So this year I rushed to get these pieces painted. Um, I had printed utility arms last year I wasn't happy with them I printed new ones and when I did my plan was to run a soldering iron between the two halves because this is two halves they're glued together and I forgot to do that in my haste to get it printed or painted so this one turned out okay I'm, I'm happy with that one the bottom one however I can see a seam and when I painted the blue and then painted the clear I swear I did not see a seam it was only after I had let it cure for a week and a half and brought it in here to assemble that I noticed the seam. And what makes it worse, and it's in shadow a bit, so I don't know how well you can see it right there. That's actually cracked now. And part of that is trying to figure out how to adjust these arms because there's a pin here. This one comes up from underneath, so it doesn't have anything to do with the top ring being on. There's a pin plastic pin that goes up underneath here because there's pins at this end they want to gravity wants to pull it down so if I open it it's just lightly hitting the bottom of the opening there and it's not really clear to me how to adjust that so if you can see there's wiggle room, and if I lift it up just a bit, it fits in without scraping at all. But how do you get it to lift up? So what I tried on this one, I put a thin piece of plastic that I cut out of, when you buy something and it comes in a plastic package, I just cut a washer out of a plastic package and put it in between the utility arm plastic and the bearing here so it has the effect of pushing the bearing further down which moves the arm a little bit up but again it didn't do enough it should be right there but it's low so John Salt um, I will try to remember to put a link to his uh, video series in the description 
Um, basically, last year when I stopped working on this, he completely built his droid in the time that I was taking a break from building mine. Um, he mentions heating up the pin, putting it in, and then while the pin was malleable because the plastic was heated, he was adjusting the arm, and that's how he did it. So I think... And that's about all his description is. I think what that means is heating up the pin that goes through the bearings, putting the pin in, and then lifting this arm up for a minute or two while that pin solidifies, cools down and solidifies, so that the pin is actually, instead of being straight, the pin is a little bit jacked to the side, I'm guessing. And so that'll lift the entire arm so instead of being level or at a slight downward angle it's at a slight upward angle which gravity will then kind of pull down to be perfectly straight I'm guessing that's how you do it again um, I am not a big fan of Facebook I go on the badly forums and I search utility arm and I get things related to software utilities and just I can't really find utility arm. I think I've tried utility plus arm, utility arm in quotes, whatever. I have a hard time searching Facebook to find what the recommended way to adjust those is. So the adjustment is not perfect. Um, I am probably going to, I will admit it, reprint both of these and these and repaint them next year, I believe. Now again, with my lighting in here, I didn't bring a flashlight. I had bubbling on these two pieces and I sanded off the clear and the blue and got down to the silver underneath and then repainted it. That wasn't good enough. I should have gone all the way down to the primer to make sure they were totally smooth. This one just has a couple bubbles that when filled in they look like pits. And so this bottom piece has quite a few, but because of the way it is and the lighting, you're never going to see them. But I think I mentioned this in a prior video. It actually looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like it's a metal piece that rusted, and then it was sanded and then resprayed without filling in the rust pits. So it's kind of like, to me, it looks like rust pits in metal, which is kind of cool. But to other people, it might just look like a blemish. Um, it's, it's not that visible. I'm okay with it, but I might end up reprinting those two pieces and these arms are two pieces and then doing what I meant to do but forgot, running a soldering iron across the seams so that they are really strongly held together and there's no visible seam line. So again, this one is pretty good. I'm okay. There's a little bit of seam line in some of these hard to get to um, areas, harder to sand. Whereas this one, it's, at least to me, it's fairly obvious down the whole length. And then this, I tried to put a plastic washer in, but the bearings, because of the paint, are in the piece so tight that when I tried to knock the bearing out, it actually split this part a little bit. Because I didn't put the glue all the way to the outside edge, because I was going to melt the outside edge. And if the glue goes all the way to the outside edge, you're melting the plastic and melting the glue. And so I just left a little bit of a barrier between the edge that didn't have any glue and it bit me there because it actually split. So I'm not I'm not crushed about it like I was with the body. They're on there, I know how they work. Um, I re I this is this like I said, I printed these last year. I printed them at a finer resolution this year, and it took didn't take that all that much work to get them smooth. So it's not, it's not, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I made a mistake and I learned from it and I can go on. It's fine. And it's not going to interfere with him getting on his feet. So the next step for me is putting on the shoulder hubs. Now I had the shoulder hubs and these shoulder supports um, already dry fitted together, but there's something that I didn't notice until um, 
last week when I put the hub on for the first time. Um, oh, that's another thing. This, everything is painted with the same bright finish metallic aluminum rust-oleum. All my silver bits, and I'm realizing that I should have got uh, a chrome type spray for this, just so it's a slightly brighter color than the aluminum of everything else. Um, I don't want to try and put aluminum tape on this. There's all kinds of different ways to make the hubs have that really chrome uh, finish on them that people use. I think the best current method is probably using uh, paint called All Clad, which just looks amazing. You have to get it perfectly, absolutely perfectly flawless in your sanding. And then it's an airbrush paint that you paint, and it really looks like chrome. That would be, the, I think, the best way to do it. Um, another thing is maybe someone could design one of these hubs that the diameter is a little bit shorter. And then find some metal flashing that is chrome that you can wrap around it and screw together at the bottom where you won't see the seam. And then you'd actually have a piece of metal over the plastic that would look like metal because it is metal. But um, that's something that I just, I worried about a bit and then I decided, you know what, that's, I'm fine with it. Just, it doesn't have to be a chrome I'm okay with it at this point. So I might revisit that next year. I might actually just pull these off and repaint it with a chrome finish. So it's just a little bit of a brighter metallic than the aluminum color. But um, that's not a huge deal. What was a huge deal is these bolts that I'm using to hold the hub through the shoulder modules. I didn't notice, but they stuck up higher than the hub by about one millimeter. And so you could probably already see where I'm going with this, what I did. I had a couple options on how to fix this. One of them was to heat the bolt up and try and pull it into the plastic so it would melt about a millimeter into the plastic so it would be flush on the top. And the other option was to cut the top of the bolts off, grind them off. And the other option was to get inside the hole and try and grind the area where the bolt sits so it's a little bit deeper. And it seemed to me that grinding the millimeter off the top of these fairly big steel bolts was probably the easier option with less chance of me screwing things up especially now that I had painted it already and wanted to have as little contact with the painted finish as possible as I was trying to do my fix and didn't want to risk warping something or weakening the plastic because this bolts into the body there to the shoulder module and then the legs go into this. You can hear rattling is captive nuts. There's four nuts that are in between two pieces that make up this hub. And you can see one there. And so the leg goes into this, and this goes on the shoulder module, and this is, you know, the main main piece that supports the weight of the body being transferred to the down to the legs. So I didn't want to take a chance on warping these, and that's why the one millimeter height was a problem because the leg goes up against this, and if these aren't sitting flush or recessed, then the leg isn't going to be spreading its weight of the four bolts that hold it onto this over the whole piece. It's only going to be spreading the weight onto the little round sections of these bolts that are sticking up higher than the plastic. So I wanted to make sure that they were flush or recessed. So yesterday I did all eight bolts and it actually went very easy. I used Dremel with an official Dremel sanding drum, 60 grit, and I did all eight bolts and it didn't even wear out the sanding drum. So happy with how quick it went. 
I mean, it did take some time, but I basically, you know, held the bolt in one hand. Um, the bolt is big enough and long enough that it didn't get too hot while grinding it to um, burn my fingers or even really get all that hot. And then held the, the uh, Dremel with the other hand, and as I spun the bolt in my fingers, held the Dremel steady, and just took off material, and then test fitted it every now and then until the point where it was flush or and or a little bit reset, recessed. So happy with the way that turned out, and that is my next step today, is to put these shoulder modules on. Um, and I think that's about all I really wanted to go over today. The fact that I'm in a better spot than I was last year. Um, just showing the last pieces that I put on, the, the blue pieces there. And that I was able to get the top ring on. I did change my plan for the bolts the four bolts that hold the shoulder modules in. I was going to put um, bolts with nylon lock nuts at the bottom of these threaded rods and that turned out to be impractical because in order to get the nylon lock nuts tight down there you have to hold the threaded rod still and to do that you're gonna screw up the threads on the threaded rod. So the only way I maybe could have done that is to use a pair of needle nose to hold the threaded rod here where it exits the body then put the um, lock nuts on so it screw up the threads right here but then drop the shoulder modules in and the actual part that you screw the nut onto is up here higher than the thread you screwed up by holding it with vice grips or needle nose pliers or whatever you need to do to get a nylon lock nut on the bottom. So I only just thought of that actually right now as I was looking at this, that there is an area right there of the threaded rod that the threads can be screwed up on and it's not a problem. But instead what I do is I, I just used regular nuts on the bottom and some uh, split washer or toothed washers to give it a little grab into the plastic and then the same thing up here a prior video where I showed the small pattern nuts that I used so there's a small pattern nut and then there's a small tooth washer and then there's a metric washer that exactly fills this round recess and that's just enough to make it about level with the body. Now, that's something I'm a little bit leery of here, is this top ring is lower than the body. You can see by the shadow here, it's level with this data port, and it's level. So I've got some dips. There's another one over there. Where the ring goes a little bit lower than the body and that might be a problem with the dome being level and spinning um, I'm not sure and to fix that would probably be putting a washer underneath this top ring to bring that up a bit and then my threaded rod might be too short yeah I haven't gone there yet so that's another thing that might bite me but again I will get him on his feet, and if I have to take that apart and redo it, that's fine. I will make my goal this year of getting him on his feet. And like I said, I'm pretty close. Um, hubs will go on now that I've got them fixed. And then it's trying to figure out where I'm going to put him and how I'm going to support his body as I put the legs on and then the heavy feet and drive units. So that will, when I get that done, that'll get his body um, out in the living room where it's going to live. It will get his battery box there, the battery box cables, uh, 
the foot shell and battery box that's underneath R2 in that bin, that foot shell, and then also the middle leg. So a lot of the stuff that's in this closet will be assembled and on him and not taking up space in here, which will be really nice. Um, I don't think I went over these in a video. Um, Jason Charlton has an excellent video on preparing these. Uh, I pretty much followed his same steps. Um, I used antique gold for the color. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's a bit more on the gold than the copper side, but I think it's okay. Um, I was not pleased with the rub and buff on these. Um, it seemed to take a heck of a lot, and I think it's because they are, a, it is a textured material, and to get a semi-uniform color, it has to get into all those cracks. So it's, these aren't exactly 100% uniform in color, but I think that's actually okay, because it gives them a slight um, bit of wear. So they could be more um, weathered in the future, but they look a combination of like a new hose, since he's not weathered at all right now, and they look like they have maybe a little bit of, of oxidation or whatever that you would get on a copper hose. It's just the color is, mm, it's okay. I'm not going to change it, but I think something that might have helped me after... I put the uh, rub and buff on with a rag is maybe if I had got a hair dryer and heated up just a little bit and went over with maybe a toothbrush just a, a, a brand new cheap toothbrush because all the crisscross patterns like I said getting that rub and buff everywhere in there I put quite a bit on and so there are some areas that you can't see really but there's areas where it's in between the crosshatch patterns too thick. And I think if heat it up and then go over it really quick with a toothbrush, it would help get some of that excess off and make the make it a bit uh, better. But, but I'm okay with the way they turned out. I think they're good. Um, they also have the magnets in the end. So they just magnetically attached to the battery boxes and the feet. Uh, the Michael Badley Patreon has uh, files created by a user for these alternate fittings made for AN6 hose that fit a small magnet in the bottom so that you have the magnet in here and a magnet in here so they magnetically attach. Make sure you get your magnetic poles right so that you can put any one of these can go in any one of the positions forward backward whatever and the magnetic poles are will make them stick so you don't have one that only goes on the left foot or only goes on the right foot they're completely interchangeable so there we go um kind of a recap of this year up to this point compared with where i was last year and now that important thing last year, once the painting season was over, I was completely done with R2 last year. And this year, I'm relieved, I guess, that I can take a break, slow down, and from working on, uh, working on the painting and prep work, and do a little bit of assembly and get him on his legs and start thinking about electronics which i haven't done at all yet and the dome that hasn't even been started yet so there we go um a bit longer than i wanted but this is kind of again a recap of the year ending with the ending of painting season unless you have some place lucky enough to have some place indoors that you can paint 